Hi, this video will provide feedback on question 3 of the Math 317 main exam. My name is Paul Marambos and I am a module leader on the Math module. The purpose of this video is to explain the requirements of question 3 of the Math 317 main exam, as well as to provide examples of candidate answers with explanations regarding whether or not they met the requirements of the question. Note that the full solution is in the examiner's feedback document which is available in the exam section of My Learning. Part A of question 3 requires candidates to analyse the financial performance of an organisation. The task group analyse is defined as examine closely, examine something in terms of its parts and show how they are related to each other. And identifying linkages between the operations of the organisation, such as those outlined in the background information and the information in the dashboard. Imagine that a marketing executive asked you to explain the contents of a business's dashboard. You would do so by making linkages or connections between the actual operations of the business and the results reflected in the dashboard. Why do we analyze financial performance? Doing so enables the identification of cause and effect relationships. This would help develop an understanding of the underlying drivers of the financial performance. Once these are understood, then better business decisions can be made, enabling the organization to achieve its goals more effectively. The definition states to examine closely. This is done by becoming familiar with the information provided. It is necessary to identify the connections between the background information and the dashboard, as well as between various aspects of the dashboard. In order to perform an analysis, it is important to become familiar with the dashboard. The title of the dashboard and the headers of each column, we've got the actual for last year, the actual for this year, which is 2017, and the industry average. We also need to become familiar with what's in each row. Here we've got the revenue and operating profits in dollars. Then we've got a, a short income statement with all items represented as percentages of the revenue figure. Then we've got some information um, on brand awareness and market share, some sales variances, some working capital um, ratios, as well as information on stockouts and the, the cash balance. Once we're familiar with the structure of the dashboard, we need to have a look at the numbers and highlight anything that appears, appears to be unusual. So for example, we can see that revenue has gone up about 5%, whereas the operating profit has gone up by certainly a higher percentage. Going down, first thing which stands out is that the, the cost of sales has gone from 71 to 66% of, of the revenue figure, which is a quite a dramatic reduction, uh, which means gross profit has improved. Uh, marketing costs have gone from 2.5% of revenue to 4.5%, which again is a big increase, and it's also a lot higher than that of the industry average. Uh, admin and other expenses seem to be pretty constant. If you look at brand awareness, that's quite a big increase from 23 to 34%. Uh, market shares dropped slightly. Sales volume variance is unfavorable, which means we've sold less volume than we would have budgeted to do. Whereas there's a favorable sales price variance, which means that we've charged higher than, than the original budget. Debtors days have gone up dramatically, whereas in inventory days have gone down. Creditors days seem pretty constant. Stockouts have increased dramatically. There's also a couple of linkages here we, we can identify. For example, there's probably a link between brand awareness and, and marketing costs, market share and volume variance. So those are the immediate linkages. There might be some more. Now we can get familiar with the background information. It would be fine to first read through the background information and then the dashboard or work through both at the same time. I'll assume you've read this already before. So I'll just point out a few things. The one point is that the Chinese yuan has weakened by an average of 1% against Australian New Zealand currencies. There's been a high growth in demand. The selling price was increased by 10% and this wasn't budgeted for. The marketing managers complained that, that the price increase makes it difficult to sell trampolines. Special offer has been put in place that double the normal payment terms. Well, that's interesting because um, that would probably link to the increase in debtors days. At the beginning of 2017, financials was decided to no longer hold safety stock. Well, that would be the main reason for the increase in stockouts and also would be a key reason for the drop in uh, inventory days. So there's a few items which have been highlighted here in the background information 
which can then be linked to data in, in the dashboard. So how do you analyze? The first point is don't regurgitate information already provided in the question. We'll look at some answers to uh, some candidate answers. These will be highlighted in red. So this first answer here states that sales have increased by 5.9% from 1.320 million to 1.398 million, whilst operating profit has increased by 20% from 277,000 to 335,000. This is effectively repeating information that is already in the dashboard. There has been an increase in brand awareness. Brand awareness is used to increase sales volume. The first sentence is repeating information provided in the dashboard, whilst the second sentence is based on the point in the, in, in the background information that states that brand awareness is an indicator of future sales. So no real linkages there. It is important that answers provided are factually correct. This answer states that the increase in overall profit and revenue would have been largely attributed to the reduction in cost of goods sold as a result of reducing safety stock. Now, the reduction in cost of goods sold did not increase revenue. It was a price increase that was the main driver of the revenue going up in dollar terms. And the reduction in safety stock would not have caused, been the cause for the cost of goods sold to, to reduce. Revenue has increased because of high growth in the demand for trampolines. That again is incorrect. The last point states that the decrease in cost of goods sold is due to the weakening yuan. Whilst the weakening yuan would have had an impact on cost of goods sold, the main reason why cost of goods sold has decreased in dollar terms is the decline in volume. Or the main reason cost of goods sold has decreased as a percentage of sales is due to the increase in the selling price. Now analyze is different to advice. This first answer states that instead of increasing prices and payment terms, revert them to how they were originally and this would improve the cash flow. A more appropriate answer would have linked the deteriorating cash position to the more generous payment terms. Dumtech should reintroduce safety stock. This will reduce the amount of stockouts. This answer would have been more appropriate if the connection between the increase in stockouts and the elimination of safety stock was um, outlined. Linkages or connections need to be identified. Revenue is up by 5.8% on 2016. The price increase of 10% for 2017 is not fully reflected in this movement, meaning that sales volume is declining. Decline in market share supports this point. This answer firstly links the increase in revenue reflected in the scorecard to the price increase described in the background information, then correctly concludes that sales volume is declining and links this to the decline in the market share. Let's read this answer. Cost of goods sold has reduced to 60%, 66% of revenue as a result of the price increase and weakening yuan. This is against the industry average of 72%, suggesting that JT's ability to charge a premium price as well as source from China and reap the benefits of an improved foreign exchange rate has resulted in a better result than competitors. So this answer licks links the reduction in cost of goods sold to the selling price increase, as well as to the weakening yuan, then considers Dunflex cost of goods sold in relation to its competitors. A good answer. There's some more good answers. Marketing costs up 4.5% of revenue, compared with industry average of 3%. This is driving the company's strategy to increase brand awareness, and this goal appears to be working as reflected in the increase to brand awareness for 2017. This one states that debtors days are well above last year in industry average because of the new credit terms. This has put pressure on working capital and can be seen in the reduced bank balance. Great linkages between debtors days and the more, credit gen more generous credit terms as well as to the impact on working capital and cash. Let's move on to part B, which required candidates to evaluate the effectiveness of a balanced scorecard in meeting an organization's strategic objective. Evaluate is defined as determine the value of something, normally with reference to specific criteria. A balanced scorecard provides a measurement framework to monitor the achievement of an organization's strategy and strategic objectives. It includes four perspectives, each with objectives and measures. In order to evaluate the balanced scorecard in the question, it would be necessary to evaluate the individual objectives and measures or KPIs within the scorecard, specifically regarding their effectiveness in measuring whether JT's strategic objective has been achieved. This diagram from the CSG links each perspective 
to, to strategy. If you need to update your knowledge on balanced scorecards, read through the relevant section of the CSG. Why do we evaluate? A chartered accountant is continuously measuring, evaluating, and reporting on various aspects of an organization. This would include evaluating an organization's financial performance, evaluating the performance of products, business units, divisions, or geographic areas within a business, and from a broader perspective, evaluating whether an organization is achieving its strategic goals. And to do this, a chartered accountant will need to be able to evaluate whether a performance measurement framework, for example, a balanced scorecard, effectively measures whether or not an organization is achieving its strategic goals, which is what this question is focused on. How do you evaluate? You can't evaluate something in, in, in isolation. For example, an income statement reflecting only the current year actual figures with no budget, no prior year figures, no comparisons to other organizations would be difficult to evaluate because there's no criteria to evaluate it against. So some criteria is needed to perform an evaluation. In the example of an income statement, criteria such as the, the budget or last year's performance or industry benchmarks would enable the evaluation of the current year's performance. Now, what would be the criteria for evaluating the balance scorecard in this question? Per the requirement, it would be JT's new strategic objective for 2018. This would enable an evaluation to take place as to whether the balance scorecard effectively measures whether or not the strategic objective has been achieved. And the SMART criteria provides guidelines that are useful when evaluating whether the balance scorecard effectively measures the strategic objective. Once the requirement is clearly understood, the next step is to become very familiar with the information provided. Let's start with the strategic objective for 2018. That's critical because we are evaluating the balanced scorecard in terms of whether it effectively measures that strategic objective. We also need to be familiar with the objective and the KPI within each of the perspectives of the balanced scorecard because we're going to need to evaluate them individually. Providing an alternative balanced scorecard does not consist of an, an evaluation. In this answer, this is for the customer objective, which says that increased customer satisfaction by 10% regarding design, quality, and visual appearance, doesn't evaluate the current customer objective in the question, which is to undertake customer surveys. Similarly, providing this KPI for the financial perspective does not meet the requirement as it does not evaluate the KPI provided in the question. This point is correct. The objectives in the balance scorecard do not link strongly enough to JT's strategic objective. But extra marks would have been awarded if details of how the individual objectives in the balance scorecard did not link to the various aspects of JT's strategic objective for 2018. And making just this comment, three of the KPIs are per year. This does not give time to take action, so they are not time bound per the SMART criteria, would not be sufficient evaluation of these three KPIs. More in-depth evaluation would have been required. It's important to use the right criteria, as this point effectively evaluates the goal in the customer perspective in terms of JT's strategic goal. It says, undertake customer surveys is not a goal, it is a task. It should aim to increase brand awareness and market share. So that is effective evaluation. This answer says that Inventory days measured monthly does not reflect the strategic goal in producing high quality trampolines and to maintain awareness um, as the leading supplier. Again, this uh, evaluation of the internal process KPI is effective as it is linked to the relevant aspect of the strategic goal. Here are more candidate answers. They, re they meet the requirements and make use of information provided in the question. Financial objective is very generic and does not support JT's strategic objective. A better objective would focus on growing revenue and increasing market share. Another one, this is on the, the customer perspectives KPI. It does not measure JT's ability to maintain preeminence or understand if it is the leading designer of trampolines in the market. Good. And finally, the internal process objective of minimizing stock levels could lead to stock outs and negatively impact JT's ability to be a leading supplier of trampoline. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful.